Okay, let's get started. So good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Today's a great topic and uh, I've got a lot to cover. So I'm going to just kind of really jump into this. Uh, one of the things I'll, I'll say is uh, a lot of what we'll be doing today is uh, going live on some of the websites I'll be showing you. And so probably the best thing you're going to get out out of this as far as afterwards we'll send you the recording of the presentation so don't worry about taking notes or anything like that uh if you want kind of more guidance then you can reach out to your counselor or again just go back to the recording i think it'll be more helpful than certainly the the slides <laughs> so with that uh first little thing about us uh we're the apex accelerator we're administered locally by the monterey county business council apex accelerator program has been around since 1985 is funded through the department of defense there's actually 96 centers across the united states and the u.s territories and seven within the state of california the mission of all apex accelerators is to promote economic growth and employment opportunities in the local markets that they serve and we do that by facilitating your access to the government marketplace, whether it's federal, state, or local. Uh, this is the, the seven um, apexes in the state of California. We're this teal area in the middle of the state, Central Coast, Central Valley. If you're in on the webinar from one of these other colored areas, uh, you can either just reach out to them or reach out to us and we can refer you to our colleagues who are all very knowledgeable people and willing to help you out on your journey to government contracting. Um, these are the services that all APEX accelerators provide. Basically, confidential one-on-one -on -one counsel. We wanna learn about your business, what you've done in the past, what are you currently doing, and then your goals for government contracting. Um, Pre-award assistance, uh, kind of like we're gonna be talking about today, we kind of help you find opportunities that are out there. Uh, once you find something, sometimes when you look at that notice, uh, it's kind of can be very confusing of what you're looking at. Uh, we'll help you review those, understand what it is you're looking at. And then also talk to you about capability statement, which is a one piece marketing, uh, one page marketing piece that is uh, preferred in the government marketplace. Great way to, to introduce yourself and your company to potential customers. Uh, Post-award assistance, uh, we can kind of provide some coaching on how to how handle any kind of conflicts you may have, talk to you about debriefs, what are they are, how, how they work, and then protest of whether they really make sense for you to go down that path or not. Uh, outreach events, when we hear about events that we think that would benefit you, where there might be potential customers for you to attend, training, et cetera, We'll push those out, out to you. Uh, at these outreach events, oftentimes there's training. We're, we're there oftentimes providing training live there. And we'll, of course, continue to do these webinars. One of the services that we provide, and I guess all APEXs do really, is uh, bid matching. And basically what it is, is we all use a third-party vendor who we create a profile on your business, upload it into their system. That system will go out and search thousands of websites uh, and then any matches then are just emailed directly to you. So it's a great way to save you a, a whole bunch of time. And oftentimes it's a way in which you find out potential opportunities from customers that you wouldn't even think about. Uh, then the certification programs, a lot of certification programs are out there. So we can talk to you about whether they make sense for your business or not. Uh, what are the requirements? Uh, qualifications, those types of things. Oftentimes there can be a lot of confusion with that. And then one of the great things is that there's no fees or commitment. So we're your tax dollars at work. So, you know, you can work with us and things go great. Uh, typically we like to say we teach people to fish. Once they start landing those fish, then they don't need our services anymore. And that's, that's our goal. Uh, with that, uh, similar to us, I want to introduce a great strategic partner of ours, uh, the local SBDC and their director, Roger Gilbert, talked a little bit about the SBDC. Yes, good morning. And thank you, Victor. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so the SBDC is a national program. Our particular center serves Monterey and San Benito counties. And what we do is provide individual counseling by people who are subject matter experts in different areas 
free of charge to customers. So when we have a, a small business or a pre-venture entrepreneurial idea, we can offer an advisor to help um, write a business plan, look for financing, work on marketing, uh, talk to you about human resource issues, whatever you might need. We'll try to match you up with an expert on that subject that can help you with your business to help you grow your business, hire employees, and uh, improve your your the operations of your business. Great, thank you, Roger. Yes, uh, oftentimes we get uh, approached by uh, individuals who are just thinking about starting a business and government is the way they want to go. And oftentimes we'll say, well, why don't you work with your local SBDC and they can help you draft the business plan so you can basically really kind of have a better understanding of where you want to go and what it's going to take to get you there uh, to have success. So with that, let's just jump in today's presentation. Uh, uh, here's our agenda. I'm talking a little bit about the purpose of marketing research, and then I'm going to go through all these websites live so you can kind of see uh, how you can go about doing it. Uh, there's SAM.gov, USAspending.gov, SBA's DSBS, which stands for Dynamic Small Business Search, uh, FPDS.gov, and then I'm going to talk a little bit at the end about private sector uh, opportunities. So with that, uh, what's the purpose of market research? Well, basically, the whole purpose is you want to know as much about uh, who buys what it is you sell. Uh, certainly, oftentimes, the other thing is like, how do they buy what you sell? So oftentimes, you may think about, you know, I have a product, I think it'd be great to sell it to the government. But the reality could be that in the supply chain, uh, you would never sell directly to the government. You would sell your product or service to another company who then has that prime contract with the government. So you need to kind of understand that that's that third bullet point, you know, should you be a prime or a sub doing this market research then might uh, assist you in determining whether you would fit as a prime or a sub, or if you are going to be a subcontractor, then who are potential prime uh, customers that you could, you could target. The other thing is, of course, you want to know who, you know, who are your competitors. So by doing this research, you can find out, you know, who your competitors are in the marketplace, uh, understand a little bit more about their business, and then actually go in and maybe find out who they may be selling to in the federal marketplace. So with that, let's just kind of jump into the first one. So SAM.gov. So a lot, if you're not familiar with SAM.gov, it's where you register to sell to the federal government. Uh, but also in SAM.gov, just to kind of a little background on SAM.gov, the federal government had like eight separate databases online, and they're in the process of merging them all under this portal, SAM.gov. So the first thing they did was that was the registration piece. Then they moved what used to be called uh, the FedBizOps, <laughs> into SAM.gov, and that's what we're going to be looking at today is uh, where they're posting their contract opportunities. Uh, when you're in SAM.gov, there's different ways that you can do searches by using different filters. Uh, so one of the things that we'll be looking at here is uh, NICS codes, uh, project service codes, the PSCs, and then keywords. There's different ways to search. Uh, the other thing that uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about is uh, saving those searches. So once you do searches and you're getting some good results, you want to make sure that you save that. Uh, the reason you're saving that search, so once you save it, what the system will do is it'll run that search on a daily basis and then email you any opportunities that match the search criteria that you set up. The other thing that's important is that with NAICS, PSCs, keywords, you know, again, uh, one may be great and get you everything that you want, uh, but it could be that another, it could be that you'll get different results using different uh, either the keywords or the PSC codes. I'll show you that. <laughs> uh, but you could save each say each search separately, so you could save ten different searches, so that way you're not really missing anything. And then this next one, follow. 
if you find an opportunity that you really have a lot of interest in, you want to make sure that you follow that. By following a specific opportunity, what uh, the system will do is anytime there's any kind of change to that opportunity, in the next bullet point, you see it's called amendments or modifications, you will receive an email in real time saying there's been a change to the opportunity that you're following. So it's really important that you're aware of any kind of changes because when there is an amendment or a modification that occurs on an opportunity that you're looking at, uh, there's a form that comes with them and you have to download that form, sign it, and then submit that with your offer, basically acknowledging that you understand the modification or the amendment that took place on the opportunity that uh, you're submitting an offer on. If you fail to uh, submit those forms with your offer, then your offer uh, will be considered non-responsive and won't even be reviewed. So real quick before we jump into the website is this is the landing page when you log into sam.gov. Uh, so let me just kind of jump over there. Let me bear with me a second while I switch this. Uh, where are we? Here we are. Actually, let me just click there. One thing that, uh, you know, you can do searches in SAM.gov for contract opportunities here. Uh, but as far as saving the searches and following, you want to make sure that you sign in. It doesn't allow you to save your searches or uh, set up a follow if, in fact, uh, you haven't signed in. So you want to make sure that you, you're signing in. <laughs> it's working. So I guess this is the landing page when you sign in. You click on home here in the upper left. And as I mentioned, this is presentation being recorded. So you can kind of go back to it and follow the these steps. But if you click here on contract opportunities, this is where you'll see all the opportunity that are out there and you can start doing some market research typically i just kind of tell people just go to advanced uh search by clicking there and what i'm going to do first is just kind of show you some results uh these are the filters on the left that are available to you uh typically what i'm doing is clicking on notice type and then it gives you the different kinds of notices. So right now I'm just interested in maybe a pre-solicitation. You can pick multiple ones and a solicitation. <laughs> and so that's, and as an FYI, solicitation is the term that they use for a contract opportunity. And you can see by just clicking on those, these opportunities here in the middle of the screen just changed. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually uh, show you some examples with a specific uh, type of uh, product. So uh, this code here, 315-990, is the next code that is uh, assigned to uh, body armor. And I'm going to use body armor as an example today. So you can see here that there's 19 opportunities here under body armor, different titles, none actually, here's one that says aviation body armor vest, but you'll have to actually kind of like here, this tactical gear one, click on it. <coughs> and as it opens up, you, you scroll down here. There's a couple things I want to point out is this under this classification, it'll tell you that, okay, this is a total small business set aside. So only small businesses can submit an offer on this opportunity. <laughs> uh, the place of performance is going to be McAllen, Texas. So basically that's where they're going to want it delivered. Um, and then in these documents down here, as it's referred to up here, 
is where they'll describe the actual uh, garment that they, they wish to see. I'm not going to open this up because it'll just open up a PDF and I'll have to shut down the screen share and move over. <laughs> but what I wanted to basically kind of show you, okay, is that by using the NAICS code, it came up here with 19 opportunities. Now, if I use the product service code for what's called Armor Personal, then it kind of drills down the nine and it's a little bit more specific. Now, as I mentioned, what you can do is you could save either one of these searches. So that way you're looking at both. So you're not missing any kind of opportunity. Uh, one thing that I would say too, is that with these uh, codes, like the NAICS code or this uh, product or service code, the contracting officer who's posting these opportunities, you may have three different contracting officers and you may have three different NICS codes put uh, assigned to the exact same type of product or service that they want to procure. So uh, be cognizant of that. <laughs> uh, so now, uh, so this, this has good, pretty good results here. Now, if I went, got rid of that and then just did a uh i'm just yeah i'm just gonna leave that alone uh let's go ahead and put this back the product service code eight four seven zero now if i want to save this uh you click up here on actions and then you click save and then it'll save that search. So then you, and then you can title it so you know when uh, it's shown what it is that it is, or when you get an email, you'll know it's based upon uh, uh, body armor. The, the other one that we just did, you, you could maybe title it like body armor uh, next code or something like that. And then, I'll show you here, save searches. You can see these are all the searches that I've saved for just various reasons over time. And you can see at the top here is body armor. <laughs> so that's like I'm saying, you can create as many of these uh, searches as you like. And like on a daily basis, not necessarily on a daily basis, but uh, if something happens on like these construction ones, almost on a daily basis, there, I'm getting an email saying, here's construction opportunities. Some of these others like remediation services, probably not as often. So uh, once you're here too, you can, you can delete them, get rid of them if, if they're not useful to you or not. Uh, let me go back. <laughs> so then as an example, if I click on this one, and then here's where you can see the follow button. So if I'm really interested in this one, I click on follow. And then what it'll do is anytime there's a update to this opportunity, it'll send me an email. And that again, could be that uh, a common uh, amendment is that you're given a time period where you can submit questions to the contracting officer just to have clarity on on the information they presented. And then what they'll do is uh, typically there'll be a window where you can submit questions, but there's a cutoff time. After that cutoff time, what they'll do is they'll compile all the questions, answer them, and then they'll post the questions and answers as an amendment to the solicitation. So everybody's on a, a even playing field. But again, if, if uh, there is an amendment, then you have to acknowledge that you saw the amendment and that um, on that form and sign it and submit that with your offer. <laughs> so now let's jump over to another. Well, let me go back. Stop this share. <laughs> let me go back to my PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah. 
So this next one we're going to go to is usaspending.gov. Now usaspending.gov is, is a database that basically shows you all the past purchases or say majority of the past purchases the U.S. government had. Uh, common filters, and I'll show you this, that you're going to see in USA spending is the time period, maybe again using the next PSC codes, keywords, uh, location, maybe you want to do type of set aside. So you want to know that, hey, I'm only interested in, um, say, opportunities that were set aside for uh, service disabled veteran owned businesses or only 8A firms or those types of things. Uh, when you go to usaspending.gov, uh, this is the their landing page and you can access basically the, the search by either clicking here on start searching awards or search award data there. And then it takes you here. And then you'll see here when we go to it, all the filters will be here on the, the left side of the page. So you can click what you want over here. You know, I'll typically pick like say three years and then an award type. I want to know, you know, what are contracts or contracts? IDV stands for indefinite delivery vehicles, meaning it's a multiple award contract. Uh, they're going to order, but they don't know exactly how much or when and those types of things. But you can see that they also post other things in here like grants and loans and other things like that. If you wanted to, you can be specific and pick an agency. Uh, if you know, as an example, who received the contract, you could put the name of the company in here and then just look at their contracts. But what I'm gonna do is, first, I'm just gonna start with uh, the NAICS codes that we used before for uh, body armor. So 315-990, what you want to do is click here, and then every time you kind of change something in these filters, you need to kind of either come down here and then submit it. This has changed a little bit, but what it's showing you here is where most of these transactions have taken place uh in the country just by color coding you can see so the majority of them have happened in purchasing of body armor in virginia uh and in yeah virginia and california but uh if you go further you can see down who's buying most body armor well naturally it's department of defense general service administration justice etc and then uh these are just the dollar value over time. But as you get down further, you can see then these are the companies that are, are actually selling body armor to the government. <clears throat> and this is, you can see, this is like this one here, this Avon Protection, Sarah Dean. Actually, uh, their value is $160 billion. And of course, that is for, the, we picked a three-year period here up top. So it could be that that's for the three year period. So it could be less. One thing too is, is that this list will go all the way down. You can see here, there's a total of 1,039. If we go to the bottom of the list, there's probably zero. So these are basically uh, contracts that uh, have been issued. Basically it's kind of saying, yes, we're going to buy something from you but they haven't made any purchases yet. In some cases, some of these might be that the reason they're no dollar value is maybe they uh, have a GSA schedule and uh, they haven't sold anything off of it. So they have a contract, but yet they haven't done anything. But again, you, you can go through this and find much smaller transactions. You can see that the dollar value as I click through these uh, gets smaller and smaller. <clears throat> so you can kind of then uh, 
just let's look at this one here. Uh, tactical survival specialties. And you can see that they're in Virginia. You can see kind of a history of their sales to the government. And you can see who they're selling to. Uh, most of their sales is happening with uh, General Service Administration and the Department of Defense and then Homeland Security, et cetera. <laughs> and you can see, too, that uh, they sell a variety of different products to the government. This is a profile just on this company. So you can see here that the biggest thing that they do sell is apparel, accessories, and other apparel manufacturing stuff. Now, again, that could be more like a tactical uniform, not necessarily body armor. And you can see that they sell all these other things as well, audio-visual equipment, electronic component, other things like that as well. Uh, how are we doing on time? Not too bad. Um, so let me go back. Move this. Uh, so let's get rid of this. And then um, we do it on the product or service code. Again. Oh, I got to reset this. I reset the filters. Again, I'll pick three years. Contracts, oops, not grants. I'm just interested in contracts and definite vehicles. And then, um, yeah, down here. There we go. Eight four seven oh product submit. Now the PSC code that I just entered was for uh, body armor. It's an armor personal personal. So you can see that most of it was purchased in Texas. And again, I'm sure it's DOD is the biggie, Department of Veterans Affairs, and et cetera. So you can see that these are all uh, potential customers, but you can also see that uh, yeah, I don't believe this. For some reason, it seems like sometimes this list of companies comes up and it's incorrect because I don't I don't believe that that Boeing is selling body armor yeah it's just like Sikorsky they make helicopters let me try something here 8470 there we go no uh, reset this. All right, now the map's changed a little bit, but now, <laughs> now we'll see, you know, the companies that we're looking for. Again, this is the one we saw before, this Avon Protection. Uh, we looked at uh, uh, Point Blank and got some information on them. But you can see that uh, this number is smaller now since we narrowed it down. So the PSC code, product service code, actually is providing better results for what we're looking for than the uh, NAICS code. Let me 
plug in here. Okay. <laughs> um, so again, through through this, you can identify companies that uh, that either maybe you could buy something from them and you could be like a dealer for them and sell your product at maybe smaller quantities than they're selling. Uh, maybe you're going to sell your product to uh, maybe local law enforcement or something like that. Or it could be that uh, one thing is here, like as an example, if we wanted to on this one, add a uh, type of set aside. So let's see, I'm just looking for small business. Yeah, here is this one. And you can see it really reduced the number of, of companies, 261, that these were actually contracts that were uh, specific small business set aside. <laughs> so, uh, and again, what you could potentially do is look at these, like here's this ultimate training munitions and see who are they selling to. So you can come down here and see looks like all of theirs was with uh, uh, Department of, what did they say, Treasury? Yeah. If there were others, they would list them here, but all of these are, you know, you can see here that IRS was, was buying them and they were like some type of, uh, of, uh, where did I see it here? Oh, SI munition helmets, whatever those are. So, uh, so now let me let me get out of this one, and then I'm going to show you uh, SBA's website, the DSBS. So the SBA has this dynamic small business search database, and this database has been around for for years and actually SBA says that uh, probably within the next year they're going to totally redesign this website and it's going to look a lot better and easier to use and those kinds of things but when you register in sam.gov as a company it'll automatically create a profile for you if you're a small business in the SBA's Dynamic Small Business Search Database. Uh, one of the really good things uh, with the DSBS is it helps you to identify your competition. And I put here as an example, maybe you're interested in uh, the other 8A firms that maybe might be your competitors. Uh, the other thing is, and you'll see this, is that it's a way in which maybe you can look at the capability narratives that other firms have written about their companies to kind of help jog uh, your brain a little bit so that uh, you can put together basically an elevator speech, speech about what your company does. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that it really helps so you can identify their UEI number and cage code number. So then you can actually use those numbers to uh, maybe see who they're actually uh, selling to either in uh, USA spending or this next one that I'll show you, which is called the federal procurement data system. And it's a great way too, that you can look for uh, potential teaming partners. Uh, oftentimes uh, one thing about people hear about the 8A program and it's a great program and some companies have some really good success in it, but they can only be in the program up to nine years. Uh, but, one thing is if they're successful in it, they have good relationships with contracting officers. Uh, and so oftentimes that you can team with them through their relationships, they can help you uh, gain access where otherwise you might not. So that say they are graduating in 8A, you are a new 8A, the government then can, uh, issue the new 8A a contract because that new 8A is teaming with the former 8A. So 
that doesn't confuse you, that's okay. <laughs> uh, when you get into the database, this is kind of what it looks like. So let's just kind of jump in here and then I'll, and I'll kind of show it to you. Okay. Or is it right here? Okay. Oops. Let me go back one on this one. Okay. So this is their website. And uh, the first time I saw this website, gosh, over 20 years ago, I mean, it looked just like this. And I didn't know where to start. I just started thinking, okay, well, I'm interested in California. I guess I need to put in a congressional district. And then I just started filling all this stuff out. Well, all of these are just different filters that you can use. Uh, so you basically, uh, the fewer filters you use, typically the better results that you're gonna get. You're gonna get. Uh, sticking with our uh, body armor example, so I'm I'm just gonna pick California, and then uh, with. Here they they don't give you an option here. They give you an option for NAICS code, which we've found out that it's kind of a little bit more too general, whereas the PSC code is kind of drills down better to what it is that you're looking for. Uh, so what I did with this one is I typed in the word body armor. And just hit return. So it's you can see up top here that it's doing its search. <laughs> so these are the search results that came up for, you can see here up at the top where on a table listing, it tells you basically what were the search criteria that you used. So we use keywords, body armor, just profile location is California, and these are the companies. So it's there's nine companies that within these narrative statements that they wrote, uh, the term body armor is is in in the their narrative statements. Uh, sometimes when you go into uh, DSBS. Uh, and maybe you put in like say, for example, a NAICS code or something like that, you'll see that this capabilities narrative is blank. And what that tells you is that the person that created a profile in SAM didn't necessarily know that it was also creating a profile for them here in the DSBS. So uh, there's information that could help them be more attractive to either uh, contracting officer, teaming partners, et cetera, just due to the information that's lacking. Once you um, register in SAM, you should go in here to the DSBS, add in your capabilities narrative. Then there's a section where you can add uh, other keywords about your business. You can put in certifications that you may have, such as maybe you're certified as minority or women or uh, DBE firm, et cetera, those are things. And then most importantly, towards the bottom, you can put in a performance history. So you can put in information about past contracts that you've had so that you can show somebody who's looking at this that, yes, you've got experience, you've, you've sold products or services uh, in the past. And these, these are basically some references that you can show. Uh, the other thing with this, the way it was designed, every time you run this same search criteria, the order in which the companies comes up changes. And I think the reason they do that is they don't want like a contracting officer to just pick the first three companies at the top of the list each time and send out a, a notice saying, hey, here's an opportunity we think you might be interested. Would you please uh, let us know? So it'll change every single time. Uh, let's look at this one here, because this is the one I was looking at the other day. So if you click on it, a company's name, this is the profile. So this company is Black Box Safety. Uh, here, you, 
and I'm not going to do it, but they've done a good job because what they've done is they have a capability statement at the very beginning of my presentation. I mentioned capability statement is something that, especially in the federal marketplace, that contracting officers like to see. So this is one of the new features that uh, SBA did add to the website is that it provided this uh, field where a company could upload their capability statement so somebody could see that, which is great. Uh, one of the things here that I want to do is I want to copy their UEI number. So again, when you register in SAM, you get a UEI number and you'll see uh, what I'll do with it here in a second. But then here's just some general information. Here's the contact person's name. Uh, their website, their email address, phone number, address, all that stuff. Uh, again, here's some information that they added that they're, they're small, disadvantaged business, service disabled, they're veteran, uh, tells you whether they're an 8A or not. They're not. Hub zone, no. Uh, certifications down here, but here you can see that, yes, they are certified by the SBA as a service disabled veteran owned small business. Uh, they got certified in November 17th, 2022. It'll expire in 2026. Uh, non federal government certification. So I'm not sure what that is. Maybe Minnesota veteran owned. I'm not sure. But <laughs> uh, if you're in construction, it allows you to put in some more information about your your bonding levels, those kinds of things. Here's a capability narrative that they wrote. Uh, they're selling tactical gear, body armor, ballistic shields, MRO products, et cetera. And then here's all the NAICS codes that they have. Uh, again, we found this company by using a keyword versus NAICS code. Uh, I'm not sure like if you see that the, they've their primary NAICS code is... Uh, They've put in 339113, but I don't believe that they're a manufacturer. I think they're a, a wholesaler of other uh, companies' equipment. So I think they're, uh, they're uh, better. Uh, next code would be 423990, uh, which they don't even, yeah, it's down here. No, that's 424. But at any rate, uh, down here, you can see where they put in some uh, of their performance history, where they have sold product. Do the, you can see here, Veterans Affairs, 873,000. Uh, this section here, uh, one thing that they've done that I would suggest not doing is they put in the name of the customer, Department of Veterans Affairs, the contact person's name, their phone number, so basically, they're letting a comp competitor know, this is who you should contact if you want to sell to, to the VA. Uh, I suggest that you put in just uh, maybe the name of the customer, the dollar value of the contract, when it happened, and then skip the contact and phone number. You can write in here, like contact uh, available on request or something like that. <laughs> But this is the DSBS. Again, it's a great way for you to uh, do some market research on your competition, et cetera. Now with this one, what? Uh, let me stop this and I'm gonna do one other, back to my PowerPoint. So I copied the UEI number for black box safety. Now I'm gonna go to this federal procurement data system fpds.gov. Uh, it's a good way to kind of drill down a little bit more on specific contracts that they have. Uh, and this is their landing page. So let's just kind of get there. Oops. It's not where I want to go. There we go. Let's see. Here it is. FPDS. So this is the landing page for FPDS. And basically the the best way that I've found to really kind of drill down on what it is that you want to do is identify your competition and then come here, get rid of this, 
copy and copy their uh, UEI number, paste it in there, hit enter. Now it shows you uh, all the contracts that Black Box Safety has had with the federal government. Now, one thing that I can show you is you can see uh, on uh, these here, over here, it gives you the like dollar values. And you can see that it's zero. And it says G GSA, FAS. Uh, what that means basically is that they have a GSA multiple award schedule, but they haven't sold anything on it. And what happens is every year they get a new contract. So you see that. Uh, but you can see further down here, here's one here with the, the VA. So let's take a look at it. Uh, when you see this here, if you click on view, then you can see the details of the contract, this award ID. <laughs> so here kind of gives you the information of, okay, this they signed the contract on November 23rd. Uh, it was good for about a year. They sold uh, $65,849 worth of uh, product to them. Uh, this is one thing that I used to think was that you see up here in the upper right-hand corner, I used to think that these are, and I think in some cases it is true, uh, is that these were the actual buyers and they were the ones who then filled this out and posted it. Uh, I found out working with a client that at times that person is just somebody that is a administrative assistant that said has been assigned to go ahead and upload these contract information into the FPDS system. <clears throat> But it, but it can't hurt to reach out to these people, send them your capability statements and kind of ask them questions about, hey, is there a forecast coming up the, for the products, service I sell, those types of things. But here's some information on the company. Here's their UEI, the name of the company, their address, et cetera. Uh, whether they have any of these uh, socioeconomic information. So uh, you can see here that uh, there are, they're a corporation. They're, they're service disabled, veteran owned, uh, nothing else. If they were woman owned or 8A, it would show it there. <laughs> you can see here how these are grayed out. So that means nothing was entered there. And you can see the place of performance was uh, in, in San Diego or in El Cajon. It was in the county was San Diego. But down here, you'll see a description of requirement. So it's limited to 250 characters. So sometimes it's enough where you can really see that, like in this case, yes, this, whatever it was, 340,000, no, 65,000 was for body armor. But sometimes down here, this can be kind of vague as to really what it was. And then if you go down here, you can kind of see more about was there a type of set aside. So you can see, yes, this one had was a service disabled veteran owned small business set aside. It was a simplified acquisition. And you can see here it was a completed under SAP simplified acquisition. <laughs> uh, if it was an 8A, it would say that there too or a woman on set aside. So there's some information there. <laughs> but again, if you go back uh, and, and you can see here, this doesn't allow you to go back. So you close it. Sometimes you just got to run it again. And then you can see all their contracts. If you click like over here on date, it'll uh, organize them from the latest to the oldest. Uh, let me just kind of out of curiosity look at this one. Yeah, you can see on this one is, again, this is the GSA schedule, but they haven't sold anything off of it. That's why you see here that there's no action obligations. If there had been, you would have seen some dollar amounts in this area here. 
Uh, what time is it? Okay. So one thing about FPDS is, is that there's a lot of information there and, uh, and I'll talk about it here in a second too. It's just that you can get kind of get lost in it. Uh, <clears throat> so here's some just key takeaways. Just kind of remember that when you're doing your filters, try doing next code, product service codes, keywords, and just work for what's best. You know, uh, if you're in sam.gov, again, you can set up multiple searches. So you can set up a search on on the next code, another one for the PSE code, another one for keywords. Uh, so you can you can do that. You, there's you can set up as many searches as you want. As you could see that I had like twenty there from over the past. <laughs> uh, and again, it just saves you a lot of work from having to go in there. What were the criteria that I used before to kind of get some good results? Once you go in there and spend some time and play around with it. Uh, and get the searches that are actually pulling up some decent results for you. Any search that you do, it'll probably pull up things that when you look at it, you'll say, that doesn't apply to me. There may be, say, 10 things that come up in the search, but of the 10, there might be only two that really is in your wheelhouse, but that's just the nature of it. So just kind of understand that. Um, again, if you find an opportunity that, you really have an interest in, you wanna make sure you click that follow button. So that way any changes to that, uh, you'll be notified. Uh, USAspending.gov, again, it's great for uh, finding who the competitors might be, uh, possible primes to work with. We didn't go through all those filters, but in USA Spending, you could have, you could have said, uh, I'm only interested in, uh, contract opportunities that were small business set aside, state of California, those types of things. Uh, I know like with uh, construction, uh, I've done a search in there so I can identify, okay, these are the large contractors who are doing the most of federal projects in the state of California. So for subcontractors, those large contractors are required to meet uh, subcontracting goals on their projects. So it's a great way to identify primes that a subcontractor can approach to say, hey, you know, I'd like to be considered on any kind of federal work that you've got coming up. Uh, same thing, DSBS is good for finding competitors and who they are selling to. And then uh, with the FPDS, it gives you more details on specific contracts. But again, I wanna note that Yes, you can see the dollar value of the contract, but as far as we get asked all the time, is there a way where I can get like unit costs on this contract opportunity from a past contract? So maybe the government is buying 10 different items. Is there a way where I can get, get that? You know, you might be able to get that through the uh, Freedom of Information Act, but uh, it could be that if you go through that process, you'll find that information like that has been uh, redacted out. It's been blacked out so you don't know. So it doesn't hurt the, uh, the, the business that submitted that winning offer. Uh, links, so here are, here's all the links. And these are live links in here. So when you get this presentation, you can just click on those or cut them and paste them. So you'll have them. So again, you're not having to try to write them down right now. Uh, so final thoughts is uh, this first one, paralysis by analysis. You know, market research is really important. Uh, you want somebody in your team to be able to go out and do this. But really, once you start finding opportunities, you know, find those opportunities, submit offers. You know, you're going to learn through that process. You know, we talked about the pricing. Uh, you can find out, hey, was my price too high? And some things like that in a debrief. So that's one thing that's nice about the federal government is you are allowed to have a debrief. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, this next one, market research companies. There are companies out there that do excellent market research, but the good ones, their annual subscription 
to receive their services typically is in the tens of thousands of dollars and up. So for uh, small companies, it's just, you really can't afford it. The other thing I'll say with that is this last bullet point is there's a lot of companies out there that will tell you that they can do all these great things for you. But for the most part, most of those companies are scams. Uh, so if you ever get emails or you're curious about a company, uh, you can always forward your information to us and we can take a look at it and say, yeah, this is somebody you, you don't really want to develop a relationship with. Or we may say, yeah, these guys are legit and it's a business decision on your part of whether you want to spend the money to subscribe to their services. So, but again, there are some good companies, but there's a lot of bad actors out there. So if you're not sure, contact us and we'll kind of let you know. Uh, again, I'll take some questions now. Uh, I'm going to do a real similar presentation on August 7th. This time it's going to be about state of California opportunities and then a little bit about local stuff too. But uh, fortunately, when you start getting down to more of a local level, a lot of like the things that you just saw uh, aren't available uh, on a, a statewide or local level. Uh, so I've got a couple of questions here in the Q&A. So if you have any. Uh, so somebody asked, how does one approach the contracting officer with, with an offer? Uh, typically, you, you're just not really not going to get an opportunity to approach a contracting officer. Uh, the, probably the best way is that if you're attending an event is, uh, for you to meet a potential customer there in person, make a good, uh, presentation to them. They like you, they like what you have to offer, and then you can develop that relationship from there. Uh, but contracted officers are really busy people. And so oftentimes when you try to contact them, uh, it's not like they're being rude to you, but more than likely they're not going to respond to you. You can still try because I know I've talked to some people who had actually reached out to a contract officer and the contract officer responded on either a phone call or an email. Uh, but there are literally thousands of contracting uh, professionals out there. And just finding who is the one can be really difficult. When you look at the solicitations, there's, they're going to give you, uh, and it's more for the Q&A, the name of an individual and their email address so you can reach out to them. Uh, but for the most part, as an example, in uh, August, the Navy has a Gold Coast event that's been going on for decades down in San Diego. So there'll be a lot of government people there wanting to meet small businesses, as well as a lot of large uh, government prime contractors who again need to meet uh, small business goals that'll be there. So that that's basically the best way is meeting someone like that in person. Uh, at that Gold Coast event, and actually a lot of these kinds of, of types of events, uh, they'll have what's called matchmaking, but you got to sign up in advance kind of saying, uh, I'd like to meet, they'll show you a list of who's, who are the agencies and primes that are participating in the event. And then you can ask to have an appointment with them. So they'll give you like 15 minutes to sit down with their team and basically have a conversation about your business and opportunities that they might have. So the next question says, I missed the part about how to update your company's statement. If it's not listed on the SBABS, could you provide more to do on how to update the statement area? Uh, if you just reach out to your Apex counselor, uh, we can email you uh, a couple things. We can email you a guide on how to do, do all these searches that I was just going through and Sam in particular. Uh, we also have one on the USA spending and then also instructions on how to get into your DSBS to actually add that additional information. It's kind of a process that uh, SBA makes it more difficult than it needs to be. So we have a document that kind of walked you through the steps. Uh, 
Okay, someone just says thank you. So, okay, I'm not seeing any other questions. Time is it? Oh, we're right on time, exactly 11 o'clock. Um, well, again, if there's no other questions, then uh, on August 7th, we're going to drill down on primarily Cal E-Procure and how to find opportunities in there and then also how to find uh, who has sold products, services to the uh, state of California in that presentation. And a little bit about going in and looking at some of the uh, like county and city websites and stuff. And they're all a little bit different. So that's why I'm saying it's a little bit more difficult at a local level than at the federal level to do that. So with that, uh, I thank you all for joining us today. And then again, I'll be sending out the recording and then this PowerPoint. And again, I think you'll get uh, most of it if you want to just look at the recording again, or at least in the PowerPoint, you'll have the links to, to these websites. So thank you very much. And we'll see you next time.